What's going on guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about saturation. Can a product be too saturated? And if it can, then how do you know if the actual product is saturated? So next time you're doing your product research, if you come across a really good product, you think, yeah, this is definitely the product. However, I'm just not sure whether I've missed the boat on it or not. Hopefully I can give you some of those answers in this video to help you make that decision of whether you're gonna invest yourself, invest your business into selling that particular product. So when it comes to saturation, Saturation, it's to be honest, it's a really difficult question to answer because it can apply to a few different things. Everybody has their own meaning of it. You can have saturation in the sense that everybody has already seen a product and they've either bought it or decided not to buy it. You can talk about saturation in, in the sense of a ad creative for a particular product because I'm a big believer that no matter how many people are selling the same product as you, if you can do it better than them with original content and a better ad creative, you're gonna be the one that captures the attention of those customers over the competition and you're gonna be the one that wins those people's money. So what I'm gonna do in this video is give you a few different rules and things that you can work to. So next time you do come across that one brilliant product. So for example, a couple of videos ago, I featured this dog toy. It was a carrot patch dog toy. It had thousands of engagements, thousands of comments. Um, it was just a fact that people were buying it because there were physical comments, actual real comments from people in the um, comment section of the Facebook ad posting pictures of their dog with the product. So it was just a fact that people were buying that current product. And somebody asked me, yeah, that's okay for them, but it's saturated now. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video then, because that particular video ad, if I can dig out a screenshot, I'll put it up now. I think it had 2.4 million views. And that's quite a lot, don't get me wrong, but in the grand scheme of things, it's minuscule. So here in the UK alone, from experience, I know that the dog market is 10 to 15 million people. So that ad has 2.4 million views, yes, but they've realistically maybe only reached 10%, 10% of the overall market size, and that's if they're solely focusing on the UK. However, they weren't. They were selling in the US, the UK, I believe a few different European countries. So 2.4 million views over all of those countries is, it's so tiny. So to say a product is saturated just because one person has achieved over 2 million views on it is just completely not true in my opinion. The other thing as well is with it being the dropshipping space, people don't use dropshipping to its advantage. And that advantage is you can sell pretty much any product in the world that you can get your hands on without having to pay for it. it doesn't really cost any money to set up a website. Well, that's not true, it does. It costs $29 to get a website live. Then you need to buy the product or pay somebody to create content for you. So that's gonna be anywhere between sort of 10 and $50. Then you need about $100 to test a product. And just by spending that much, so $200, you will know whether that product is gonna be a winner or not for you. And that $200 may sound like a lot of money, but in comparison to other business models, it's not like Amazon FBA. Plus, you never know what's gonna to happen to a product. As cheesy and cliche as it sounds, you truly are just one product away from completely changing your life. So my advice to anybody watching this video, if you ever encounter thoughts or worries about a particular product being saturated, then follow the following rules that I'm about to go through with you. And if you're still in doubt, then just test it. You never know what's gonna happen, especially at this time of year with Q4, people's buying behaviors are so much more excited. They're so much more increased. People are spending a lot more money online than they were a month ago, two months ago, six months ago. So now truly is a great opportunity. So the best thing you can do is just try. And worst case scenario, you waste a couple of hundred pounds. So rule number one is, is the product in an evergreen niche? What an evergreen niche is basically, Evergreen means is, is there new people coming into the niche all the time? And if we go back to the dog toy as an example, the dog niche, then yes, it is an evergreen niche. There's new people adopting dogs every single year in the UK. And every time somebody adopts a dog for the first time, then they need everything. They need a dog collar, they need a dog lead, they need a dog bowl, they need dog toys, they need dog beds, they need it all. So you've got fresh new customers to target that are gonna be interested in your products. In comparison, if you were to compare this against the, I don't know, um, bird watching niche. Now this might be a harsh example. It might be a lot bigger than um, what I realize, but just going on what my gut is telling me then, the bird watching niche is probably quite a small niche to get any kind of substantial traction and build a significant business solely here in the UK, just in the bird watching niche. 
there's probably not going to be too many people joining it each year and therefore you might struggle to scale a business based on that if you're involved in the bird watching niche by the way and i'm talking complete rubbish please feel free to put me straight in the comment section down below rule number two is how big is the niche that you're targeting so the dog niche again i use it as an example quite a lot because i have a lot of experience in it i know for a fact that it's somewhere between sort of 10 and 15 million people here in the uk that own dogs that is a huge amount of people the only way that niche could be 100 percent saturated by a particular product is if there's two or three other companies out there all selling the same product and their ads all have five 10 million plus views i've never ever seen that happen the only time looking back in my last six years that i would say that a product was truly saturated was probably fidget spinners and that was because everybody in the country or every child in the country wanted one so not only was it popular in the drop shipping space it was popular on amazon it was popular on ebay it was popular in supermarkets everyone and every business was selling fidget spinners so that's probably the only case in which i've come across a product and it's truly been saturated a great way to look at it is if you come across a product that you're not too sure about is ask yourself the question is do people who aren't involved in the dropshipping space know what this product is or have seen this product before? Is it really popular on Amazon? Is it really popular on eBay? Will people come across it day to day in the local stores that sell those type of products? So again, with a dog niche, are you trying to sell a product that's already in pets at home that's been sold by multiple sellers on Amazon, multiple sellers on eBay? Because if it is, then the chances are your audience may have already seen that product before and therefore, instead of coming to you and buying it from you, they may just get it from that shop next time they're there or they may just go to amazon or ebay as for that carrot patch dog toy though which i discovered it's not very big on amazon at the moment it's not very big on ebay at the moment it's definitely not available at pets at home which makes it a truly unsaturated product and still to my mind makes it a great opportunity for q4 if you haven't seen that video make sure you subscribe firstly and then go back um, and check that one out the next thing you can also do is have a look, do a bit of research on the platform in which you want it to be advertising for. Facebook is great for this because it makes it super quick, super easy to find people selling the same products, is what ad creative are they using? Because because the dropshipping community is quite small really, especially here in the UK, there's not really that many softwares and services that provide for it. So there's not many options in terms of go-to options for having ad creatives made. So what tends to happen is ad creative saturation happens a lot more quickly than actual product saturation. So in the rare case, you do come across three to five sellers that are all selling the same products that you wanted to sell, but now you're thinking, oh, it's saturated because there's three to five sellers. Next thing to do is take a look at what creative they're using. If they're using stock footage that's readily available online and then all of their ads look very similar, then in my opinion, there's still a massive opportunity to be had there. Saturation does not exist in my opinion if you can do it better than everyone else. Look at the most competitive industries in the world. Look at industries outside of dropshipping, whether it's the fashion industry or whatever it may be no matter how competitive an industry can be if you can do it better than everybody else so an extreme example i know this is extreme but the premises uh, still apply to drop shipping which is on a much smaller scale the car industry was super competitive there's dozens of different brands of cars that pretty much do the same thing they get everybody from a to b tesla came in they did it better than everybody else by providing a car that can get somebody to somewhere a to b on electric power, which makes it a lot cheaper for them. There's certain tax advantages. They kind of redefined what a car can do by having that massive screen on the center console. And now they're dominating what was quote unquote a saturated market because they started doing things better and more innovative than everybody else. We can take that same kind of strategy or premise if you like and apply it to drop shipping. If there's dozens of people selling the same products that you wanna sell, have a look for if you can do it better than them. As a final note, failing that and all of those things I've just been through, if you're still not quite sure about what to do and how to make your mind up the best thing you can always do is just have a go 
as cliche and cheesy as it sounds, you truly are, can't stress this enough, one product away from completely changing your life for the better. Use dropshipping for all of its advantages. Get a store set up, which you can do very, very cheaply for $29. Get an ad creative made either yourself using your mobile phone. You truly can just film a six figure, seven figure ad using your mobile phone and then dedicate 100 pounds, 150 pounds to testing the products on Facebook and just see what happens. Worst case scenario is you lose your 200 pounds and you can move on to the next product. But at the end of the day, unless you actually test a product, you never know what's going to happen. Something else I forgot to mention earlier on in the video is when you come across a particular product, if we go back to that carrot patch one as an example, has millions of views, it's obviously doing a really good job, is check out where they're doing a good job because the world is a big place. Unless there's multiple sellers of a product selling globally and they all have 20 million, 30 million plus views, that product is nowhere near being saturated. So if you do come across a great product and it has 5 million views, lots of brilliant comments and you think it's just too saturated, before you write it off altogether, check where those views are coming from. If they're all coming from America, try and find somebody selling it in the UK. If you can't find somebody selling it in the UK and you know for a fact it's selling well in the US, then there's obviously a huge and brilliant opportunity to be had there. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it if you stuck with me this far. I really hope this video helps you out. Now is such a brilliant time to get started in e-commerce. Do not be afraid of failing and testing a product and it not working out. You never know what's going to happen, so have a go. And like I said earlier, you're just one product away. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.